Let me show you what $115 gets you in Cuba. In the morning, I was supposed to meet up with the host at Iglesia de San Francisco de Paula. Another guy and myself met up with our host, Claudia. Claudia took us down Leonardo Perez. She told us about the heritage restoration project in San Isidro. She did a research project when she was in university, and she said she wanted to bring more visitors into the San Isidro neighborhood. Since its existence, it's always had a bad reputation. Coincidentally, there were also graffiti artists who wanted to do the same thing and paint murals in the San Ysidro neighborhood. The city of Havana was hesitant since some of those walls of the buildings were over 200 years old. After two years, the artists were given permission to paint on the walls, but they had to get their own supplies, which spray paint is not sold in Cuba. Graffiti artists have to do it all by brush. And that was one of the selling points that Claudia had made to the city, as well as these other artists. They had kind of unionized together and had a representative go on their behalf to explain to the city that a lot of the times the graffiti looks kind of shitty because they have to do it fast it's at nighttime and it's usually in a very awkward spot but if the artists were given time and the right supplies they could make amazing artwork Claudia showed us a bunch of different artists who looked at a mural that was painted by an artist named The Happy Zombie. He made a mural about different heritages and culture that were mixed into Cuba. There was Spanish heritage, African, and Asian heritage. The mural depicts an African saint, Yorua, which practices Santeria. The Happy Zombie wanted to depict the mural of the two saints. Since the masters of the slaves practiced Catholicism, they came to a compromise that Yorua was close enough to another Catholic saint that the masters allowed their slaves to to believe in. A couple years ago, international graffiti artists were requested to paint on the houses that were over 200 years old as long as they brought their own supplies. A lot of them came from Mexico and Europe. Since the first project had taken off so well, the city approved for it to happen again. There's another local artist from Havana that goes by two plus two equals five question mark. He did a controversial mural that got him into trouble. Police harassed him a ton and would intimidate him by taking him to the station and detaining him on no grounds. You'll see in a lot of his art, there's a guy in a ski mask and supposedly that is his alter ego. Mr. Mill did a mural that represents the past culture being passed on to the future. El Ewa is an old African saint he's passing on to the youth. It's called Private Conversations. The words were cut off intentionally. Early 1900s, San Ysidro was a legal red light district. French men ended up bringing European girls and they pimped them out as well as Cuban girls. During that time in the early 1900s, there was the pimp named Alberto Yarini. He was around during the Cuban War of Independence against Spain, so he was super well known at the time. Everyone wanted to be him. All the dudes did and all the women wanted to be with him. Reason why he's important is because he was the symbol of a concept called Cubanidad. Alberto Yarini was born into a family of Matanzas who owned a bunch of sugar plantations. He was educated in the United States. He spoke fluent English and Spanish and was well connected in the political world. He would import prostitutes from France and he did most of his business in San Isidro. But on November 21st, 1910, he was killed by a rival French pimp, Louis Lotol and his gang. We ended the tour at Seva Park. And there's a bunch of cool murals over at this place and they were massive. Since I had another tour that night to go bar hopping with a couple of locals, I figured it would be better that I took a nap. So I went home, napped for a little bit, and then I went to Central Park to meet up with the tour guide at eight. Tour guide Carlos showed up and there was four other people in the group. There were these two Filipino girls from Florida and a Mexican chick from LA and a Jamaican guy from New Jersey. First place we went was to a bar bar called Fajoma. We sat on the rooftop, we got a chill, they showed us how to make mojitos, we smoked a cigar, and we listened to live Cuban music. We stayed there for a couple hours, and then we got a taxi, and we went to Jardines, 1830. It was a salsa club. They had some really good music, and they had some salsa instructors there for us to learn a little bit of the moves. Either way, I still sucked ass. Around midnight, we got into a, another taxi, and we drove to King Bar. This place was jammed, fucking packed. There wasn't any room to dance, and it was a shit show. We all still had a lot of fun. We were able to kind of groove around our own little corner. And then at one point, there was a guy with an electric violin who was standing on the bar playing to the music. It was random as shit because he was playing the reggaeton. 